We're going to talk about something that I absolutely hate. Mobile phones and social media. Are you on social media? Yeah, I am. Do you get hammered by people? Trolls, yeah. is that what they're called? Yeah, but you just... It's something that I've probably become used to. I think it was a bit of a shock at the start. Um, but you just... Yeah, it's just the world we live in at the moment. How much time a week... Well, there's screen time. Do you look at your screen time? How much time do you week do you spend on your phone? I try and limit it to... Um, say, like, a limit of, like, three hours a day. Um, and, like, it's crazy just how much it just adds up over time. Mm. Um, sometimes I look at it just in disgust how much I've actually been on it. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's probably been self-aware in some aspects, like trying not to yeah, read into it too much and getting too obsessed with it and finding other things to do other than yeah, just being on social media on your phone. Well, I, ta I take you as a pretty disciplined person that would be able to handle that and, and handle the time that you spend on that. What about some of your teammates? Like, do you, do you worry about how much time and how it's affecting their performance? Uh, sometimes, like, it, everyone's different, I guess. Um, some people take it on board, but we do talk about it a lot, um, sort of off the field, like we'll have uh, mental skills sort of workshops and talk about it, the effect it's having on, on our mental health and, and just being on it too much. And I think, you know, I think the biggest thing is, like, after you play a bad game or even after a good game, if you're constantly searching for other people's sort of recognition or um, stuff like that, and it's people that you don't even know, then it just becomes this um, ugly sort of circumstance where if you play a good game you might be happy that people are saying oh you know he's killing it, he's playing real well but <laughs> oh, as soon as you play a bad game you, you take the same effect you see yeah. the negative comments and then it, it affects you so it's it's weird how it's it's come to this but yeah we talk a lot about sort of just prioritizing whose opinions you live and listen have, to and have, not been on have it. Have you ever had a few sherbets or a few of them and at night you've done something on your phone the next morning you wake up and it's like what have I done there? It's like, yeah. but there's been numerous <laughs> incidents in the off season yeah. where it's just like, you're going to rip in, put mm. your phones away. Because we've seen players get in trouble. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's crazy. Can you believe it? I just, well, I, I just can't. Because it's just hopeless. It is, it is really hopeless. And I know they're, they're just passing a law, or they're trying to pass a law in Florida at the moment where uh, kids under the age of 14 can't have social media. Like, I can't understand why government hasn't stepped in. Like, it is beyond doubt, beyond science, beyond everything, that it, it is not good for you. There's huge parts of it which aren't good for you and send people down a spiral of a, a worst existence. I can't believe government do not do something about it. I just, it's beyond me, beyond me. Well, we've, we've all been in dressing sheds after, a, like, a win. Or it can be the greatest atmosphere of your life. Mate, the, yeah. the ten minutes after a win. Sitting down with, with, a, with a beer, yeah. talking about the game, and, and that's where you actually really gravitate as a, as a group and bond and yeah. as a group. H how do you feel when you, when you see pictures of players in the dressing rooms on their phones straight after a game, not well, communicating? Well, that's something, when I retired, that's something I miss. That yeah. ten or fifteen minutes after a huge win, mm. you sing the song, everyone's up and then you're having a beer and you're chatting about it and you're having a laugh about that. Does that go on anymore? Probably not as much. I think there's probably pockets that like to do it. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely sort of yeah, gone away from that, I reckon. So players come off, and, and we see them on the cameras, and they're straight on their phone. Mm. Would they be straight, straight on social media seeing what these gronks are saying about them? <laughs> Potentially, yeah. yeah. And like this, this must have right there. so yeah. much effect on their mental health. But not only their mental health, their performances, mm. the weeks leading up, especially if someone's a bit fragile with mm. their confidence. Mm. I still can't get out. Well, that, that's what I mean. It's like it's almost getting to the stage sometimes where if you're not aware of it, you're you're literally listening mm. to a guy that you have no idea who he is. He doesn't know you, but he might be saying, "Oh, you know, just talking absolute rubbish," mm. and you're taking that on board rather than listening to your teammates or your coaches. And you can't unhear it. You can't unsee it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You can't and unread it. It's just how social media is built. To it's that addictive sort of you. You just keep trying to pick it up, but you got to just wean that out. And um, you know, I think that's that's one thing about being a part of a group is actually, you know, being able to communicate with the people around you and, and sharing that connection, especially if, if you're winning, but even more so if you're losing, like, you want to get around each other, have each other's backs mm -hmm. and, and take those sort of important opinions on board. What about the commercial side of it then? Obviously, that's got to be the appealing part to leading athletes. Mm. I'm assuming there's only a very, very small percent of people who are making any money or decent money out of, um, you know, um, social media. What's it like from a point of view of 
uh, making money and commercialising your, yourself and your interests. Well, that's the thing now, you know, that's that's where all the, the money kind of is. Like, if you're a sponsored athlete, you have to be posting on Instagram. And um, I think the other the pro of it is you can actually connect to people all around the world. Like, I've spoken to other people from different sports just through Instagram and you can Women connect soccer. with them. And <laughs> Freddie, <laughs> I'm just you saying, mate. Out. You couldn't, oh, help God, no. couldn't help yourself. I took a walk. I've done well. <laughs> no, but My it's very true. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Without sounding like Dr. Phil, yeah. the attention yourself and, and Mary get, is it, are you worried about your privacy moving forward? Both, uh, both years in your, you know, your, in your sports? Yeah, a little bit. Um, but, you know, we've sort of both said that it's something that we can't control, so I don't want to get too worried about it. I think at the start it was definitely like a shock, um, particularly for her, like she's a bit younger and she sort of just came in the spotlight and it all happened so quickly. Um, so yeah, it was, it was hard, like you can sort of cop being in the spotlight for your sport and all that, but your private life's, I guess, a different story, so. Put extra pressure on you? Do you feel like it's adding, adding some pressure? Uh, no, nah, I don't reckon. Okay. Not, not for me. Um, but it's probably... her? Look, hers, she's had, it's happened so quick. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I actually felt sorry for her at the start, especially because it was her personal and private life, and she's an introverted um, woman. But, yeah, she, she's very mature, and she's dealt with it really well. Um, over there, it's quite good for her in England. Like, they're still sort of out of the spotlight a bit. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's something yeah. that we just have to deal with. Could you see the Reese Walsh, the one, um, he's now sponsored of Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren. Yeah. And that's international. Mm. Tell me about Ralph Lauren. Is that like deodorant or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a bit of everything. It's clothing. But. They reckon his social media, Reese Walsh, is just exploding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. It's just that all these opportunities come through social media and having a, having a following. So, it's, yeah, it's just the pros and cons. Of Why don't you get to a certain age, though? I can understand. Why don't you get to a certain age? You're at an age where you're supposed to be mature enough. You can make your own decisions. But, mm -hmm. you know, with kids... You know, the thing, you know, kids yeah. having social media is a, a huge problem. But, you know, I think it also adds to our sport. You've got someone like Reese Walsh, who, you know, obviously he's fantastic. You know, and incredible to watch and a good-looking lad. And, you know, he loves, that, he loves that part of uh, life as well. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's pretty awesome for the sport.